What is the relationship between the Australian bushfires and climate change? Or should I call it global warming? First, let me express my sympathy for those personally caught up in these extraordinary natural events. I have never been in such a situation, and it is extremely difficult for me to understand how anyone can cope with the devastation involved. The loss of homes, in fact the loss of everything, it must be very disheartening. Please do not forget to ask for help. It will be forthcoming and always be strong in the knowledge that the whole of Australia, in fact the whole world, is thinking about you. Now to the topic of the relationship of these fires and climate change. These fires have been made so much worse by the long drought that has plagued Australia for some years now. The whole of the bush is very dry and so readily ignites and the fires spread far and wide. Has this drought been exacerbated by climate change or should we be using the real term global warming? No, it has not and even the IPCC acknowledges that there is little or no connection between their climate change scenarios and drought. The climate alarmists want us, the normal people of this planet, to reduce our CO2 emissions and so save the planet. They are seeking a reduction of the planet's average temperature of 1 or 2 degrees. This by draconian measures that will drastically reduce our living standards. Only unreliable, expensive, renewable energy. No planes, no cars, no meat, no air conditioning. In fact, very little of anything that we may think of as essential in today's world. What we should be doing, though, is not spending the vast sums of money that are being used for these purposes, but put a small amount into ways to mitigate for any change that may or may not happen. The earth has not warmed at all in the last 18 years or so. Is there going to be a crisis in the future? I don't think so. So if the planet's average temperature was reduced by this one or two degrees, how would that affect lightning? Please explain. Lightning being one of the main causes for starting these fires. Another cause is arson, and any decrease in the temperature will not do anything to help in that regard. There has been a steady decline worldwide in the number of forest fires. Have a look at the graph I am now putting up. There has been a steady increase in the temperature and that has been matched by a steady increase in CO2. Note, I believe that the temperature increase has caused the increase in CO2 and not the other way around. This increase in CO2 has had an effect of greening the planet. Remember, plants like more CO2 and therefore they grow better. This has a side effect in that the moisture content of the soil is also increased. Therefore, more CO2 means fewer fires. So let's eliminate climate change or global warming as the main reason for these very serious fires. If it is not global warming, then what is the reason? Australia has a long history of bushfires and they have been bad in the past and will be bad again in the future. The alarmists are focusing on the period after World War II as the time when the temperature really began to rise. In 1939, before that time, the state of Victoria was devastated by the Black Friday fires. Over 75% of the state was affected. Some 71 people were killed and over a thousand homes destroyed. Over 2 million hectares were burnt and ash reached New Zealand. Not like I heard the other day on our news that the ash from the current fires was the first to reach this country. Oh, for some real investigative journalism. So how did global warming affect that event? Global warming hadn't even happened yet. In 2009, following the February fires when some 173 people lost their lives, Australia had a Royal Commission of Inquiry into bushfires. At the time, 
global warming was being put up as the main culprit. One of the main recommendations from that inquiry was that fuel loads need to be drastically reduced. However, the state governments have failed to do this. The recommendation was that Victoria should reduce the fuel load by 5% a year by reduction burns during the winter. This, if it had been carried out, would have reduced the fuel load in some 770,000 hectares of bushland. What did happen was the actual area treated was only some 200,000 hectares. This I consider a gross mismanagement of the problem, and more than likely it was because of the rather powerful green vote in the state. Is New South Wales any different? I don't think so. All fires need three elements. A heat source to start the fires. This is usually from lightning, but increasingly also from arson. Oxygen in the air and fuel. Once a fire starts, it is the fuel load that determines the ferocity and extent of the fire. For some thousands of years, the Aborigines have known that winter burnings will clear the fuel and so prevent the worst of the summer fires that must inevitably follow. For some hundreds of years, cattle ranchers have used their cattle to clear the fuel, but the governments of more recent times have banned this practice, so giving rise to the current bad situation. National parks have been locked up and fuel load reduction prevented. Why can't we learn from history? Or is there some other agenda in play here? Well, that is the end of this video. If you agree with the content, please hit the like button. It will most definitely help the YouTube algorithm. If you would like to comment, both positive and negative, feel free, as it is good to have a two-way conversation. Also, this may give me ideas for future commentary. Please like and share this video with your friends and family. And if you wish to subscribe to find out when I upload the new videos, just use the appropriate buttons. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.